everyone and Happy New Year! It's Carrie, and in today's video I'm creating a Cher doll from her video If I Could Turn Back Time. I'll be showing the face up and the costume construction. Stay tuned to the end of the video for the final look. So for this particular doll I've been wanting to make a Cher doll for quite some time and I decided to put my commissions on hold to do a couple of the dolls I had on my list. So I made this one and the Dolly Parton doll which can be seen in my last video. I chose this version of Cher because I just feel like when you watch that video there is just no one cooler than Cher. She's absolutely gorgeous and is just one of my favorite all-time performers. So while this one wasn't a commission, she sold, but thankfully to one of our oldest and dearest family friends, so it's so nice that she's gone to one of the best homes I could imagine. So. What I did was, um, if you follow my channel or my social media, you know that I tend to use Ever After High dolls for my projects. However, with Cher's facial features, that particular line of dolls doesn't work. So I decided to use the head off of this Disney Descendants doll and the body of a headless mistress, Bloodgood from Monster High. I felt like this combo worked well with the elongated face and the height. So I rooted her with some soft alpaca, um, some actual alpaca fiber, and ended up just curling it at the end, gave her kind of a layered cut and curled it at the end. Um, that's usually the last thing I do, and it's difficult to film that. Um, so if it's a simple style, I usually don't put that on film. So there you may have seen I was using some sandpaper to sharpen my pencil. It's kind of a tip I learned from one of the girls in my Doll Artist Collective. If you're not following me on Instagram, um, I am a part of the Doll Artist Collective. And uh, we do a bi-weekly, or as often as we can, we do a Tips and Tricks Tuesday where we post... Um, tips and tricks or uh, anybody can ask any questions they want and me and my fellow doll artists answer questions. So it's turned out to be a helpful thing for me as well and that tip of just sharpening it kind of saves your pencil if you sharpen just the lead on some sandpaper rather than always sharpening it. We know we can go through these pencils quite quickly if we're sharpening them all the time. So I had a lot of fun working with this Disney Descendants doll. She was the first one that I've ever done and I really liked it and I hope that I have the opportunity to work on another one. I'm not like that great of a fan of the bodies of theirs. I'm just so, I think if you're a Monster High or Ever After High fan, those body shapes are just so unique that I tend to be kind of biased and just always want uh, those doll bodies before any other. They're okay. I mean, they're pretty good art as far as articulation. I just like the shape of the others. But I really like this face sculpt. It's very different. And like it has a more defined nose and more defined lips than the Ever After High. So it was just a lot of fun to work on. So I use Pan Pastel and all of the supplies that I use are listed in the description box below along with a link to my Amazon storefront where you can see the products that I use along with the um, a little bit of information about how I use them and uh, that link is in the description box below and if you purchase from that link I do get a small commission.
To create the dark pupil, Derwent watercolor pencils seem to work best for the black. It's funny how different brands, I like to use different, different, um, I like to use particular brands for particular things. Like if I want a dark color, I tend to use the Derwent because they really are heavily pigmented. But then I like to use the Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle for fine details because they're, they have a harder lead. So as you can see for the eyebrows, I used some Pan Pastel in this uh, Burnt Umber color, I think it is. And then I shaped it up with an eraser, blended it out a little bit, and now I'm adding the detail lines with the Faber Castell in black. I'm adding some white highlights under the brows to just to have her eyelids sort of pop. It really adds to the like heavier eyelid that she seems to have. And adding some highlights on the interior of the eyes as well. Blending in some blush and adding some forehead highlights. Let me know in the comments below if you have customized uh, Disney Descendants. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the dolls. I really love the face sculpt. Still prefer the Ever After High and Monster High bodies, but these faces were really fun to work on. So this is really the only area that I use paint, and that's for the highlights in the eyes. It's just like a nice pop of, of white for those highlights to give the illusion of a reflection. And then I just glossed the eyes, and I believe I glossed her lips on this one and gave her some eyelashes. For the uh, bodysuit, I started with this wig cap. I left this footage in here just because it's um, actually a really good alternative uh, for sheer fabric, but I ended up using some um, some netting uh, like a tool instead because it, it just wasn't sheer enough for me. So I used this fabric glue to um, just kind of fold up the hems on there and then I did stitch it up later. And I'm just making her leather jacket. I'm using this faux leather or just a vinyl. And there is the final look. So I was pretty happy with her. Like I said, I really loved this video and um, I loved how her hair turned out. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed if you haven't already. Also hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a wonderfully happy 2021. Happy New Year again. Take care. Bye.